Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to an introduction to computer. And this course is basically to help uh, to give the practical aspects of uh, people who might have recently bought a computer or a laptop and they want to get the basic knowledge on how to use their computers or their laptops. So this course is meant for them and also for lower primary or DHS or SHS, anyone who wants the basic knowledge of computer. So you are warmly welcome. My name is Godwin Ashon and I'm the one that will take you through this course. So I believe you are already on chat.com. So on kuchat.com, if you go to courses, information technology, teaching the console. Even if you are watching a video, it will be appropriate for you to as well as Google.com. Okay, so this is a course we are taking in production to computer. So like I introduced myself this is week one so I introduced myself. So my name is Godwin Ashan so This course is meant for everyone and there is no prerequisite for the course. And what is the course objective? So by the end of the course, you should be able to boot the computer. That is, turn on the computer. You should be able to shut down, restart or put the computer to sleep. You should be able to manage files like create a folder, copy, paste into folders, delete files, copy and cut and the rest will be doing all those things. You should be able to install, open or uninstall a software. Then you should be able to connect to the internet, browse the internet, create and manage emails. So basically, that's the uh, course will be taken. If you want to know how to use Microsoft Word, PowerPoint and Excel, that will be the Office tool course. Now once you can take it after you are done with this. You need this basic knowledge before you move on to those applications so that when there is done, there are certain key terms that are mentioned like right click a mouse and the rest, at least you should know what it is about. Okay, so let's get started. So if you haven't logged on to kuchat.com, um, in case you want to contact me, you need to create an account and log in. Once you log in, there is chat with instructor on the home page of the course. So you just click on chat with instructor and you can send me a message and I can reply. Okay, so let's get started. So what are we going to study for week one? So this is just one month course. So just four weeks. So if you are free the whole week, then it means just four days. If you take each of the week for a day, then for this you should have all this knowledge and you should be able to be using the computer so week one you will learn how to boot a computer that is turn on the computer you will learn how to shut down or restart or put a computer to sleep then we will have some of the input devices then we will also discuss some of the output devices discuss storing story devices then we will talk about the desktop so that will be that will be that for week one then week two we will talk about file management we will see how we can create a folder how we can delete a folder how we can copy a folder how we can cut a folder how we can copy a file to a folder how we can cut a file to a folder, how we can open a file like playing music and videos, and how we can delete a file, and how we can empty a recycle bin after we've deleted the file. Okay, then week three. Week three is about software. So we will learn how you can install a software, 
how you can open a software application, how you can close a software, how you can on install a software, and also we talk about antivirus. Then in the for our last week we talk about the internet, how you can access the internet. So if you have a laptop or a desktop that has Wi-Fi, how you can connect to the Wi-Fi. Then how you can browse the internet. How you can do downloading of an application on the internet. Then we also talk about how you can create an email address, how you can send an email, how you can read your email, how you can log out of your email, and how you can reset password your, your email password. Then we also talk about searching the on the internet. So if you have a research to do, how you be able to do the uh, search? Then when the result comes, how you be able to be doing the documentations and all those things? We will briefly talk about that. Okay, so let's get started with one. So you click on the study icon. So this is just a computer. So a computer is a device for processing, storing, and displaying information. So this course, you see the practical aspect of this definition, how you process, how you store, and how you display information using the computer. So this is a desktop computer. So this type of computer is called desktop computer. And we have uh, the keyboard. So this is a keyboard which we use to key in the information to the computer. And this is also a mouse. So a mouse so we use to give command on the computer by clicking on certain applications and copying on all those things we use the, uh, the mouse. Then this is the PC. So this is a computer if you have a desktop computer. Now when we come to booting, I would like to, to draw your attention. You can see the power uh, icon here. So if you are using a desktop computer and you have to put on the, uh, your content on your computer, the power button over here is where you click after connecting your power, your your powers both your computer and your desktop. Okay, we will talk more about this in the subsequent slide. So there are a number of types of computers. We have a desktop which we have shown to you over here. So this is a desktop computer. Then we have the laptop. Then we also have personal digital assistants. So those ones were the early uh, smartphones that you can type in some things as you can say make notes. So we have a personal digital assistant. Then we. Uh, got the smartphones which we can also do a number of things with it just like a, a mini computer then we have the netbook then we have the mainframe <coughs> then this should be notebook <coughs> excuse me then we have the mainframe then we have the embedded so there are, we also have the embedded system as well where we can have a mini computer in the car or something that also do uh, like process information, store some stuff, or uh, give the commands to the cars or other devices as well by programmers, uh, maybe programming or some microcontrollers which are used in these devices, which also serve as a computer. Okay. Because it process information, store and display information. So those are also types of computers as well. So basically, in this course, we will be focusing on the laptop and the desktop. So that is basically what this course will focus on. And we will be using Windows operating system. So if you have Windows 8 or Windows 10, the looks are similar. So this is what the 
the operating system will be using. So if you are a Mac uh, user, I think some of the things are similar. Yes, that I'm using Windows for these tutorials. So those that may not be the same, then you may have to contact someone that may have used Mac for those slight differences. But the concept will always be the same. Okay. So this is a desktop computer, which is example I showed you over here. So for a desktop computer, you first of all need to power the monitor and power the computer itself. Okay. Then for the computer, they both have a power slot where you put in your power cable, both on the monitor and the uh, system unit. So let's check over here. So if you are next to your monitor, you can see that the this cable, there is a slot for it. And beside this uh, cable, there is also another uh, slot for the power cable. And this is the power cable. So we have this. This is the power cable. So you put this uh, uh, position at the slot over here. Then you put in this one in your socket, where your power source, your socket. Then you turn it on. Then with the system unit, you also put this one here. That's the power uh, slot. So you connect this uh, you connect this part over here to the power plug and the slot over here then that one too you can put it in the socket then you can power it so once you power both the pc and the monitor and you've connected the monitor to the pc using the vga cable this cable is called VGA cable. We'll see it in the next slide. So you connect this one. One goes here, the other one goes to the PC. Then you connect uh, the monitor to the power source. And you connect the PC to the power source. Then you, turn, you have to uh, power them. So you, you switch on the power. Okay, so once you are done with that, so this is the VG we are talking about. So we have the, uh, the slot, so you just connect them to the appropriate. One on the monitor and one on the PC. Then for those that may be using the, uh, maybe a computer, uh, a TV as a monitor, they, they need the HDMI. So this one too, you look at the appropriate place on your TV or digital TV, the appropriate slot for the HDMI, and you connect it. Then, if your laptop or your if your desktop computer has this uh, HDMI slot, then you also connect them to your PC. So you connect your TV to your PC using the HDMI, or some also have the VGA also connection so any of the options which is available then you can use them but the key concept is that you need to first of all connect your monitor to your power source because the monitor has to be powered it has to be on and you also need to connect the monitor to the pc because whatever goes on the pc you need to display so that you can see what is happening so you need to connect your monitor to the pc and you, you use a vga cable for that so you connect your VGA cable to your PC, then your power cable to the monitor, your power cable to the PC, then in the, in the appropriate power slot, then you can turn, you can switch on the power. Okay. So once you've done that, then you have to turn on your computer. And the process of turning on your computer is what we call booting. So you say booting is the process of starting a computer. It can be initiated by hardware such as a button press or by a software command. Okay, so in the hardware, you have to click on the uh, power button. So if, if you are having a laptop, this is the icon for a power uh, button. So you look, 
the appropriate place where they place this power icon in, on most uh, laptops is at the top of your escape uh, key so on your top of your escape key you have the power uh, button but some also have it at the side of their laptop so you have to check your ears where this uh, icon has been placed so you just click on it to to start your to boot your computer remember of course if you are using a laptop maybe the battery is already there is already sufficient battery with a no percentage so that one when you click on it it will be booted but if you are using a desktop where you need to have the power remember always you need to connect your power cables and switch on the power before you, when you press on this the computer will be booted okay so this i've explained but you can go by it says if you are using a pc you have to switch on your monitor as well so on your monitor So your muscle as a this monitor also have a, as a power icon so you look for the power icon the same icon for the, uh, the pc is also on the monitor so you look for the power icon so you just also switch it on then your monitor will be on and you switch on your pc as well so that it displays the information on the screen on the monitor Now shutting down or restarting or putting a computer to sleep. Now shutting down, you are automatically shutting down the, the or turning off your computer. But to restart, probably you want restart is just you quickly shut it down, then you switch it on again. So you, you are not the one switching in your computer will automatically shut it down and switch it on automatically. So that's what we refer to as restarting. So normally we do restart and when you finish installing an application, they may ask you to restart or maybe your computer may be freezing because maybe the RAM uh, memory is a lot of, uh, it has taken much of the space so you have to restart so that it will free some of the uh, RAM. So sometimes your computer may be freezing so you can restart it so that it's almost like as if you are just starting the computer and sometimes you may not want to put off your computer but you want to put it to sleep so when the computer is asleep many activities will not go on but the computer is not active so whenever you press any key when the computer is asleep when you press any key on the on the keyboard then the computer will be awake or it will it will be on it's already on but the start menu will come if there is a password then it will ask you to enter the password but if not then it will display the screen normally when you put it to sleep uh this, the screen will be dark like like i see it has been switched off but when you press any of the key then the light on the screen will be on so you can see the last uh, application that you've been using so normally, if you are uh, maybe going to do something briefly, or maybe you are doing download or any any this and that, or any activity that you are doing that maybe some people have the opinion that uh, the more if you keep your computer on for a longer time without turning it off, it lasts longer than you shutting it every now and then. So some they prefer to put it to sleep whenever they are not using it, so that their computers will always be on. But remember, if where you are coming from, electricity is expensive, then you can also shut it down. Because if you put it to sleep, even though much uh, of that electricity will not be used, just like it is on. Because when it is on, the activities that it done consume a lot of uh, electricity. But if it's asleep. The consumption is lower but if you automatically put it off because you are not using it that also saves electricity so based on what uh, you decide but to shut down 
the computer totally goes off. To restart it, it shut down, then start again automatically. Then to put it to sleep, the computer, no activity goes on in the computer, but it's not also uh, off. So anytime you press any of the keys on the keyboard, then the computer will be awake or in the computer, the light on the screen will show. So you can, if there is a password on the computer, then you can enter the password, then you access the computer. But if there is no password, to show the last application that you've been using before you put it to sleep. Okay. Now to, to do that, you need to press the window icon. Like I, I told you that I'm using the Windows operating system. So you need to press this Windows icon. And where can you find this? Now you, you can find this on desktop over here. So here is uh, the Windows icon on the taskbar or the toolbar. So here we have the Windows icon. Now on your keyboard too, there is Windows icon. So on the keyboard, on the keyboard, there is also a, a Windows icon. So if you press this one to the Windows icon will show. So any one that you press. So if I, if you click on the this uh, Windows key, it's called Windows key. If you press on it, then that will also work. Or you can go here, then you press. So any of them that you decide. So when you press on that, then this will show. So here, where the power icon is, when you click on it, all the uh, options for sleep, shutdown, and restart can be found over there. So you choose the appropriate option that you wish. So if you want to put it to sleep, you just press it, then it will go to sleep. If you want to shut down, you just press it, then it will uh, shut down. If you want it to restart, you just press it, then the computer will start to restart again to shut down. So we are input. <coughs> input devices so these are some of the input devices we have the keyboard which have as we've seen it earlier on then we have the mouse then we have the scanner so if you want to get a soft copy of a, a, a paper you just put it over here then with the appropriate uh, software on your computer you just click on that button to start to do the scan. <coughs> Even some scanning up <coughs> a slot for USB connection. So after you've done your scan, you can just copy it to your pen drive or your phone. <coughs> so later on, we'll also look at the storage devices so you know what the pen drive or the USB drive is. USB flash. Okay, then we also have the joystick. And so basically, we we'll talk about the keyboard and the mouse because that's what we normally use it more often. So we have parts of the computer mouse. So this is where we have the cable. So the computer mouse also has <coughs> the USB uh, connection. And so you can here, you just connect it to your USB slot. So we will also look at the USB slot in the, when it comes to the storage. So I know where you put the, this USB slot. So here goes to the USB slot on your computer. So the USB port on your computer. This cable, you, you set it inside. Then some mounts don't have this. Some mounts has. So here, <coughs> you normally use to scroll down a page. Scroll now, scroll up a page. So, whilst you are scrolling this, then the page will be either moving upward or downward. So, based on what you want to do. So, if you are scrolling this way, it goes, it goes to the top. If you are scrolling that one, the page moves downwards. Then we have the left click and the right click. So, anytime I'm asking you to right click, then I'm saying that if you click this side of the mouse, so if I'm giving you an instruction and I say you have to right click the mouse, so I mean that you need to click this side of the mouse. If I say click on the mouse or click on something, you are going to use this side. So here is a click and here is right click. 
So if there is any click and I didn't specify <coughs> that I left, then you should automatically this is a click. And if I need, uh, you need to right click on something, then I will specify that you need to right click. So you need to click this side of your mouse. Okay. So this one goes into the USB port of the computer. Then here, if you want to screw, you are reading a page and you want to scroll up and down, you use this part. Then here, if you want to select something or click on something using the mouse, then you click here and right click. If I ask you to right click, you will see a couple of examples where we right click on the mouse. So to right click on the mouse, you click this side of the mouse. Okay, then we also talk about the keyboard. Okay, so these are parts of the keyboard. Okay, so let me zoom it a little bit so you can see that more vivid. So on your keyboard. So this are the keyboard. So here is a Windows key we talk about. So you have your window key over here. Then you have the control and shift. Okay. Then control normally some keys you need to press control and the key at the same time. So if you ask to do control, maybe example, if you ask to do control Z, it means you press you one of your your left um, hand you press on the key then at, at the same time with your right hand you press on the other key so if you ask to probably control c if you ask to do control c you put your left hand on this at this side ctrl so you put your left hand there one of your fingers there on it then on your right finger you can uh, press on your c so this will be control c you do them at the same time so control c is a short shortcut for copy then control s is for cut so later on when we come to this uh, fast manage file management we will talk more about that so that's the control key so if you ask to do control something then you should know that you have to press this at the same time and the key that you will ask to control and to press so control p probably for printing something if you are you have something on the screen and you press ctrl p it will, it will print it will start to print so that's it so later we will talk out some of these short uh, cut kits so that's for the control key then we also have our function keys so here we have our function keys so the function keys normally <coughs> I use in software that you may need to press a particular function to perform a particular task. Okay. So then we also have the escape key. So for the escape key, normally if you zoom on application and you want to reduce it, for example, if you are using YouTube and you press on the zoom key, so the zoom key is most often this one on youtube if you, you zoom the full screen and you want to make it uh, to, uh, to reduce it to the smaller screen so you just press on the escape key then it will come to the smaller screen okay so that's what the escape escape key is used for so if somebody says press on escape key it's talking about this one and these ones are the function keys okay then we also have the special keys. So for the special keys, we have something like print screen. Print screen is uh, normally the short is to P R T S C, which is print screen. So print screen, if you are having, uh, you want to print the screen of a desktop. So when you press on uh, that print screen, this part of the key. If you press it then whatever is on the screen will be copied to your uh, your clipboard so anywhere you want to paste it then you can go and paste it so if you are using microsoft Word, which you consider it in our office tool 
then if you want to print what is on the screen if you press on PRTSC it will copy what is on the screen so you can go to the Microsoft uh, Word and just go and paste it what you've taken on the screen and paste it over there or if you have an editor where you want to edit the, that uh, image then you can also paste it so for example if you want to use paint you can go and put it in the paint and you can edit and cut some parts and take the parts that you need then we also have the Kesa uh, or arrow keys. So here the arrow keys or Kesa keys is for moving. Okay. So if you want to move to the right, then you use this one. If you want to move to the left, so you use. If you want to move to the uh, <coughs> to the top, you use the one. If you want to use uh, move to the but uh, you use this one. Okay. So these ones normally it's also for moving or scrolling okay so if you, you want to scroll to the top you just press here if you want to scroll to the bottom you just press it if you want to scroll to the left you press it if you want to scroll to the right you press here so that's it for the Tesla keys okay <coughs> then we also have the numeric uh, keypad so the numeric keypads are the uh, we also have some here, some of the numbers here, but here is normally numeric uh, key pass. And some numeric key pass, they are automatically locked. So you see the uh, N U M lock. So if you, you are on your keyboard, you can look for N U M lock. So the M U M M lock is for locking the number key. So if it is off, then when you press any of this number key you, 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 it will not work so if you are typing something and you need a number and this num lock is, is not turned on it's not pressed then any, none of these numbers will work so if you want to use this part, uh, number key you need to click on num uh, lock and turn it on so when you press on it the light will be on so like you see when I press on it, you can see that the, it gives me an information on the screen over here. Now it is on, the numbers are on. If I switch it off, it gives me that the number key is off. Okay. So when you press it, the number key, either, you either turn the number key on or off. Then I've talked about the special key. So with the special keys, you have the delete. Then we have the home, we have the end, we have page up, page down. Okay. So basically, that's it. So the delete, you know what delete does. It deletes uh, maybe a text or a character that you paste the text and next to it. Okay. Then what other key are we to? Then this greater than, less than key. And we have the space bar. So this space bar is a space. If you want a space, maybe you are typing, you need a space. This is a space bar. This is what we call the space bar. And these are the keys you have. Now, if a key is at the bottom. Okay, so some keys. So keys which has two options. To get the ones at the top. So by default, if you don't press the shift key, the buttons are the options. So if you press, this one has uh, the column and the semicolon. So if you need the semicolon, you, when you just press this key, it will give you semicolon. But if you need the column, which is at the top, you need to press the shifts and the key itself. So all the uh, all the keys that have two options, like the act and the two. So the, in, in the American keyboard, the art is over here. So we have the art and the two. So if you press this key and you don't press the shift, the two uh, will, will, will be the key. But if you need the top key, you need to press the shift and the, the, this key at, uh, at the same time. So you press shift and this key, then you get the top uh, uh, key, which is the art. If you need the uh, uh, hashtag, 
this is at the top, the number sign. If you need it, since it's at the top, you need to press the shift key and that key. If you need the dollar, you need to press the shift key and then this one. If you need the percentage, you need to press the shift key and the percentage. If you need the end key, you need to, or the symbol key or ampersand key, you need uh, to press the shift, then the key. So all the keys are at the top, the bracket, opening bracket, closing bracket, uh, plus, manuals. So all the keys are at the top. If you need any of them, you need to press the shift key and that key in order for you to get the ones at the top. So there is cut, then GR. So with that one too, you can use it to access the third key. For example, in the European keyboard, there may be in, on my keyboard, which is the European keyboard, which is the Finnish keyboard. It has the quotation, it has two and the hat icon is over here. So it means if I need the hat, I need to press Alt G R, then the hat over here can be accessed. Okay. So in the if you are press the Alt G R for the third option. So the the first option is so if a key is only just one character, you just have to press it. If it's two, you need to to get the second option. You need to press the shift in the key. If the key has three options, then you need to press the Alt G R before you get the and at the same time with the key before you get the third option. Okay. So that's basically the main thing. If there is any additional one, so here we also have the Windows key. So if there is any additional one, we just talk, then this is the enter key. So if you want to enter something, just press the enter key. Okay. So that's the enter key over here. Then in that, we also have the backspace. So the backspace, if we we, are, we do a uh, uh, office tools you see also the backspace normally we can also use it to clear uh, test which are in front of it and the delete uh, takes care of the ones which are at the right of it okay but when you finish this course and you are doing office tools we'll talk more about those differences the back using the the backspace for delete and the delete uh, Key. Okay, so that's it for the keyboard. Then we come to output devices. So output devices, we have the webcam. So if your lap, you know you are using a laptop. Laptop by default has webcam with them, so you don't need a standard webcam. But on a desktop, most often you need to connect a webcam to your computer before you can have the webcam, web camera, in order for when whoever you are chatting with to see you okay so these are output uh, devices then the monitor is also an output device it displays an output on the screen the speakers is also an output device and you have the printer also an output device whatever is on the computer you can print it out then the headphone is also an output device and have the sound and the printer as well so these are output devices which i know you are familiar with okay and to connect to this, most of them have the uh, USB uh, connection cable. So you just connect them to the USB uh, cable. So on the subsequent slide, you will see the USB uh, ports. So we, these ones have USB cable. So you connect the USB cable to the printer, then the USB man will put it on the computer through the USB ports. And then some printers also are, uh, come with a software. Which we need to install them first before you can be able to use the printer. So when we are we get to software, then we also know how to do installation of the uh, uh, software. So if you have a printer and, with, and it comes with a software, then you can also install the printer software on your computer. Then you can connect your printer to your computer and start to print. Okay. Then we are now on storage devices. So normally we store things from the computer to the device or from the device to the computer. So these are some of the storage uh, story devices. So we have the 
flash drive or USB drive, USB uh, or USB for short. So, and this one we have the a memory reader. So here you can put a number of memories on it. And it also have the cable, USB cable. So when you connect the USB cable, you only put the memory cast here. And you connect the USB cable to the computer. So whatever memories you have here, it will show on the computer. And you can access the files on them. Okay, so the pen drive to really uh, insert this one on the USB port. Which on the next slide we'll see what the USB port is. So we just slot it inside. Then when we get to folder, how to create a folder? Now we we'll also talk about uh, when you spot a pen drive, how you can see the folder of the pen drive, and how you can access your files. We we'll also talk about it. Then this is the CD or DVD. So then that what we have the CD or DVD drive. And I want to also sit in an instruction slide so that you know where you can put your DVDs if you want to play a DVD on your laptop or your computer. Okay, so this memory card, we just slot it. Then on the laptop, it has a memory card slot, so you have to locate the memory card slot and insert, insert this one there. The subsequent slide you will see where you can locate the memory card slots where you can put it inside. Okay, so this is the USB port. So here yeah, we have the USB port. So you just connect your USB and set it inside. Now you are need to know how you position your USB. So when you you are inserting, it's not going to. You have to turn it. Then you try to see the appropriate position. You just insert it inside. So once you insert it inside, and your USB is is, is okay, it's not faulty. Then you, most often you hear a sound from the computer that uh, USB has been inserted. So when we get to uh, folders and the subsequent week, when we are talking about folders, we also talk about how you can see uh, the folder of the, your uh, external drive or your pen drive or your flash drive then you can access your files on them so that one will be it in the subsequent week okay so this is also a standard drive this is also a flash or pen drive or USB or how you call it okay so that's it then we have the CD drive so here in the CD drive if your computer has one you only press on this part, then it will, it will reject by itself. So when you press here, it will reject. Then you put in your CD. So once you put in your CD, and you just press, uh, press it, then it goes inside. If you want to reject it out, you just press here again. So when you press here, it will automatically reject by itself. And we, this is the memory card slot. So you look at the part on your laptop where you can have this slot, then you press it inside. Now, once you want to eject, you just put a briefly press it and eject it, and it will automatically eject by itself. So, that is it for the memory card slot. Then we have computer desktop. So, what is a computer desktop? So the computer desktop is the main screen here that you see after you boot your computer. So when you boot your computer, the first screen you see is the computer is your desktop computer. Your computer desktop, that's the desktop of the computer. So it's like the, the top of an actual desk where you do your work in the same way we have with the desktop. It serves as a surface for you for your work. Okay. So this is the way my desktop previously look, that's how my desktop previously look before I change it. But now, this is how it looks. We will talk about how you can change your desktop to the style you want, to the way you want it. We will also talk about it in the subsequent slide. Okay, so that is it for desktop. So. We are talking about computer desktop parts. Okay, so the desktop parts we have 
our in the previous uh, operating system there is a start button here when you click it gives you options for menus over here but in the windows 8 and the rest the, the, it's no longer exists you really have the windows icon here where you can click and you can search for your icons okay so then we have the quick launch so quick launch are normally applications which are here which will be easy for you when you click then you start the application then we have the system trail over here so here we have a, some small small icons over here it is called system trail so that one you can see that if you insert a pen drive then the that icon will be over there when you move it then the icon lives so that's what we have our system trail then we have our icons on the desktop then we also have our recycle bin which looks like a bin okay so this is a recycle bin so on your computer you also have a recycle bin so anything you delete goes to this bin so anytime you want maybe you decide to uh, not to delete again you can go back and restore it so that it goes back to where it used to be but if you decided that uh, I don't, I am 100% certain that I no longer have it on the computer. Then you can uh, double click on it and clear or empty your recycle bin. You also do this, I think, next week or so. Okay. So we continue. Okay. Then changing desktop background image. So to change the desktop background image, it says right click your desktop. So you see what I was talking about, right click. So if I'm saying right click, then you should know that you need to click on the right side of your mouse. So that's right click. So when you right click, you are the, at the right side of your mouse on the desktop. So you, you, are, you are need to be on the desktop. So when you right click, you choose personalize. So in the personalize, you click desktop picture. So when you click the desktop picture, you click on browse. In the browse it will give you option of your location where your picture is where you want to choose your background image so when you select the location all the pictures in that that uh, look, the location shows then you can just uh, click the picture you want so once you click the picture you want the by default the field is selected but you have many options so you can choose any of those options which is appropriate for you so once you are done with that you can change the background color by just clicking on change background color then the color options will come and you can choose the one you want and once you are satisfied you just click on save changes okay so we are going to demonstrate this so it says right click so at the right side of your mouse okay now if you are using a laptop now on your mouse pad on your mouse pad so since i didn't put any image over here let's go to mouse so i show you laptop mouse part so in the, on the la, uh, mouse part if you are you don't have actual mouse but you are using a laptop so on mm -hmm. mouse part we have the right click Show you an image of the mouse but in case maybe you don't have actual mouse with you and you're using a laptop okay okay so this is a mouse part so here this is if i ask you to right click i'm talking about here if i ask you to click you just click here okay then here normally we use to remove the mouse so if you want to move the mouse you just be pressing it to move it to the direction where you want then the mouse or the cursor like you are seeing on the screen cursor so the thing that look like the hand is cursor in computer so if i say something cursor it means the moving uh, hand 
okay some kind of becomes an okay so that's it so that's the uh, the mouse part on the laptop so those of you using laptop so if i say right click you just click here if i say click you just press here if you want to move you just press any of this one to move okay so we continue So we go back to our desktop. So you right click, then you choose personalize, like it's, it was said in the tutorials. Okay, so in the personalize, you choose desktop uh, background. Okay, so desktop background, these are the, the, the folders, so you can choose the folder where you want. So if maybe I want maybe pictures from maybe this folder, so I can just click it. So it lists the text on that folder. Okay. So you can choose the one that you want. Okay. So maybe if you want this picture, if you want this picture, then you can click it, then that picture will be shown. So any of the pictures you click, then that will be shown on your desktop. Okay. Now, like I said, by default it is filled, so you can choose the one you want. If you want it to be fit, I'll choose all the options so you can see, see how it is. So if you want it to be fit, you just click, <coughs> excuse me, just click on this. So if the fit, it fits onto the uh, the screen. Okay, so you position it to fit on the screen. As you can see, the, the fits. That's the fit. Okay. Then I choose. I choose stretch. Okay, so stretch it to stretch. So you can see that the picture has been stretched. Okay, so it has been stretched on the screen. Then I choose tile. Okay, so tile to use the actual picture image so you can have multiples of them to cover the entire screen okay so that's the tile and if i choose center to center the image on the desktop okay so however you want so however you want you can choose the one you want okay so if you have maybe your personal picture that you want to use so you just browse to where your picture is so if i want to use this picture i just click on it and it's automatically change okay so this one is small so, so any picture you want you just browse to where the picture is then you select it so once you select you choose how you want it if you want it to be centered However, you want it. If you want it to be tall, to be. If you want it to be stretch. If you want it to be centered. Okay. So once you've done that, you just save changes. Then everything will be saved. Okay. Now with the color too, you can choose the color. So you can choose the color you want. So of this color you want and when you click on save and that will be the color for your for your screen okay now because this image takes uh, the entire screen you are not seeing the color but if it's a smaller image if it's a smaller image then you see that the color has changed so let's say if it's this image, a smaller image then you have the color okay so it change background color so if the change background color you press change it's okay. you click ok and the background color will change so that one will be change background color so where you choose the image you just go change background color then you choose the color you want then it will change and once you are satisfied once you are satisfied just click on save now we also have themes for the computer. We have, the desktop has a number of themes. 
So you choose, you can choose which of the things you want to try, and the one that you are satisfied with, okay, the one that you like, okay, and the one that you, in case you don't want your picture or a picture to be there, you can choose any of these things. Okay, so the one that came with the computer is the panel. Okay, so this was my default desktop. So I can change it to any how I want it. Okay, so once you are satisfied, you need to click on save. It will automatically be saved. Okay, so you continue. Okay, so you just you've talked about changing the thing, then changing the icon display. So to change the icon display, that one to click, then you choose the appropriate icon size that you want. So you choose icon. Hey, you choose view, then you choose that, so you right click, so you click the right side of the mouse, you go to view, then choose that property, if you want the icons to be large, you click on large icons, okay, so if you want them to be small, smaller, you choose small icons, okay, if you want them to be medium, you choose medium icons, want them to auto arrange and you choose auto arrange and they will automatically be arranged for you so you choose the option that you want okay now if you want to sort by maybe the name if you want to sort the display maybe you want to sort by name so it will sort by the name it's a, okay then if you want to sort by type item type sort by the type of so the folders will be on their own applications will be on their own and all those things and if you want to sort by date modify and this will be arranged by dates now, okay now to refresh the screen you just right click you just right click and you press refresh and it will automatically be refreshed okay so that's basically our desktop okay so that is it for today so i believe you enjoy the camera so in summary by now you should be able to turn on the computer by connecting your powers your vga cable then turn on your monitor turn on your pc and then once it is on And boot, click on the power icon to boot it. If you want to switch it off, you, you use the, either you use the Windows key or you go to the taskbar or toolbar, then you click on the window icon. And once you've done that, you get your this display. You click on the power icon. A sleep shutdown and restart option will appear and you choose the appropriate one. And we also talk about the input devices. We have the mouse and the keyboard. We look at the parts of the mouse. We said we have the right click, we have the uh, click, which is the left click, and we have the cable where this one is a it has a USB port where a, a USB slot so you put it in the port in the USB uh, port connect the mouse there are also wireless mouse so for wireless mouse it's cordless so that one once you have a battery and they are i think there is a switch on the big button when you click on the switch button it automatically be connected and keyboard too you also have the wireless keyboard so any one that you are using if it's cable one it also has a USB place where you need to connect the you need to connect it to the usb port we look at we talk about the USB. So this is a USB port. So the keyboard and the mouse is not cordless. You need to connect them over here. So any of these ports you can connect them. Okay. And we look at the storage device. You are using CD or DVD. 
be the price. So you just press here to either it gets once you are done, you press it inside. If you want to get, you also press it here again. You have the menu card slot over here when you set it here. Then if you, you have the menu reader, you just put your menu here which has a USB connection. So you just put it inside your USB port and it should be seen on the counter. When we talk about the desktop, now you can change the image of the desktop and the background color by just right clicking and when you right click the option comes and you choose personalize and you follow. Okay. So thank you very much. Have a lovely day. So like I said, if you want to contact me, you have to log in. You have to log in to your cool chat account. Now once you log in and you are on the home page with the course. You are on the course. You just be contact with an instructor. You can just send me a message. And I can also reply you. Okay. So enjoy your day.